So if we want to understand, I guess, some of these processes that are affecting how the surface and the age of the surface is changing, we really should start looking at the Earth, right? That's kind of the simplest Place one. we know the easiest. <laughs> so, I mean, we do get craters yep. on the Earth, but we tend to get them in desert regions. Yep. And that's not because meteorites like hitting deserts. It's just because if it lands in a desert, it's not going to get eroded so much. Ah, so there's not a lot of weather to actually change the local environment, so it just sits there. Yes, I mean, enough rain and frost and everything would eventually erode it and fill it in. So, for example, one of the biggest and most famous impacts is the Chicxulub crater, which is thought to be the one that the dinosaur-killing meteorite. We'll talk about meteorite impacts yes. later. But this is in the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico, and on the surface there's really very little to see. Yeah, you don't actually really even notice this thing is there. What you do see is maybe a particular line of... Chenotes, I forget how it's pronounced, but the, the, uh, the uh, sinkholes, yep. and also some gravity anomalies. So you find rings of higher and lower gravity, presumably where the deep underlying rock was shocked by the blast wave. Okay. But this crater has been, this is only 60 million years. This and would it's, be incredibly it's, recent by the standards of the moon. That's right, and it's completely disappeared essentially from the surface. If I were to take a picture and just show this, I'd say, where's the crater in there? You would never find it. That's right, so it's, it's, it's very tricky. Um, there's another reason, so partially it's erosion, why you don't get okay. these things on Earth. You get wind and water and waves and that erodes things. But also, there's very little very old rock on the Earth. Okay. Now here's a topological map of the Earth, so showing the altitude of all the places both under and above the oceans. Yep. And what you can see is there's a very big contrast. There's the continents and some continental shelf just under the ocean, like you can see around Australia. That's right. And then there's a deep ocean. It just kind of falls off. And it's one or the other, there's not much in between. You can actually do a histogram, you can take every point on Earth and measure its altitude. And what you see is there's an awful lot of the Earth that's very close to sea level. Yep. And there's an awful lot at the bottom of the deep plains, and there's a gap in the middle. Mm. So the Earth is what we call bimodal, statistically. Okay. That's, uh, you've got two modes of distribution. You've got the deep oceans, yes, which are typically you know, four kilometres deep, and you've got the land, and most of the land is it's very close to sea, sea level. level. That's There's right. a little bit of Mount Everest and things up here, and a but few deep trenches, but most of the Earth is one or the other. That's right. And that's thought to be caused by um, plate tectonics. Okay. So in the Earth, you've got this very thin crust, yeah. only a few, 10, 20, 30 kilometers thick over the oceans, and it's being carried around by motions, convection of the magma underneath. And so here's a simulation of some magma convection. Um, so what you can see is the heat from the middle is welling up, and yep. just like um, convection from a heater or in a frying pan, yep. it causes the lava to move around, and you've got a solid crust on the top, but that's a bit like when you're cooking a, yeah, that's a right. sauce or something. There's a very thin, dry crust on the exactly. top. Exactly, and, and as soon as you mix it, it just goes away. That's right. So it's being carried around. So this is our normal idea. You get this huge ball of... Magma, yep. and then stuff gets carried around on the surface, and that's the ocean plates moving. So then are you saying that because, because as these plates move, they're changing the surface of the Earth? Well, for the oceans, absolutely. Yep. So the ocean plates are only 100 million, 200 million years old tops because they get extruded at the mid-ocean ridges, then flow away, and then usually sink down. Okay. Now, that's probably all you had on the Earth originally, like four billion years ago. You just had the ocean plates. Okay. But every now and then you get a volcano coming through the ocean plates. Yep. And this would, um, as the lava comes through cracks of the ocean plates, some of the heavy elements get left behind, leaving a light, silicate rich, fluffy, floaty sort of rock on the top. And these fluffy rocks would start building up like foam on top of a bath. If you and so it, a bath. But then it gets layered and layered and layered. But when the the ocean plates get pushed down below something else. This fluffy stuff is scraped off the top and just starts piling up on the top. Ah, okay. So it never sinks, it's too buoyant. Okay. And so this light, silicate, rich stuff probably started being scraped off on one plate, basalt plate went beneath another one, and it scraped and became larger and larger and larger, and that's how the continents form. Okay. Continents are the pond scum. I was about to say that we're, we're kind of the leftover crusty bit of the cake. Yes, and we don't sink, so the, the ocean plates are constantly forming and then sinking down again, but they're scraping off like barnacles at the top, this light fluffy stuff, which gets bigger and bigger, presumably eventually another few billion years' time, by which point the Earth will probably melt because of the sun anyway, the, the continents are getting bigger and bigger and bigger until eventually they might all gridlock over the entire surface. Okay. But at the moment the continents are only a third of the Earth's surface, most of it's oceans. That's right. And this is a map of the 
uh, different ge geological regions of the Earth. Yep. And you can see there are some regions, particularly in North Canada and the Pilbara and Western Australia, which are very old. These That's are between right. 3.6 and 4 billion years old. So does that mean they were formed first in this process? They were probably some of the first bits of fluff that got scraped off and the first pond scum to agglomerate. And as time went on, more and more bits of pond scum have been added on the edge to make the continents bigger and bigger. Okay. So, but most of the rocks on Earth are only a few hundred million years old. Okay. Many geologists will tell you Precambrian rocks are pretty old. Yep. And the Cambrian's only like 600 million years old. So there's very little rock that's older than that. That's right. There are a few of these very old regions. But there are just not many of them. And even these very old regions have usually been folded and buried and earthquaked. And so they're not, they just haven't been sitting there at the surface. They've often been pushed deep underground and raised to the surface. So any meteorite craters on them have long since gone away. So essentially our surface uh, of, of, of Earth has gone through this huge churning process for multiple times for hundreds and hundreds of years, meaning what was there four billion years ago is just long gone. You can still find a few crystals or tiny bits of mineral that were left from that age, and that's how they date these things. Yep. But by and large, there's nothing that will preserve a meteorite crater from this very early period. Mm.